The climax of Egghead Island seems like it's heading towards one final sacrifice from the most unexpected character, Kizaru. Not just an act of rebelling against the world government, not just changing sides, but a true sacrifice. Kizaru genuinely giving his life to save the Straw Hats and the future of the entire world, going out in a blaze of glory. And most specifically, I believe this is because Imu is going to use the same weapon that he used on the Lucia Kingdom as a last ditch attempt to destroy Egghead Island and stop Vegapunk's message from fully playing out. And the only person on that island who has a hope of stopping this giant weapon this assault of light from the heavens, is Kizaru with the power of his light, Logia Awakening. Yes, the first Logia Awakening we will see is Kizaru's, and it is likely to be the final great act of a man desperately trying to make amends. Everything from Kizaru's character arc, the themes of Egghead itself, the direction of the arc's finale, the past clues from storylines like Any's Lobby, and the hints we've recently gotten about Logia Awakening all point to this conclusion for Kizaru's storyline being extremely likely. So let me break it down from the start. To begin with, the writing of Kizaru through this entire arc has been heading towards some kind of dramatic change for him. Prior to Egghead Island, Kizaru was always presented as a fairly one-dimensional character, a little trolly but ultimately obedient, who doesn't question what he is ordered to do. However, Kizaru's arc in Egghead begins with establishing for the first time actual self-reflection and awareness that he is nothing more than a pawn, who does as he's told. As the arc progresses, we actually begin to dig into Kizaru as a person, the bonds and relationships that mattered to him in the past. As we watch him slowly, bit by bit, sever each one as he painfully trudges along through his duty, unable to break from the role that he has been scripted into. No matter how much it pains him, it seems that Kizaru cannot simply rebel and do what his heart desires. And yet, the primary theme of Egghead Island is precisely the opposite. That at the end of the day, no matter what, you cannot control the free will of living beings. At some point, something simply has to snap. We see this concept present itself through a myriad of characters, but most importantly, one of the primary driving factors for living beings rebelling against their programming is emotional bonds. The love that Hancock Seraphim has for Luffy, or the love that Kuma has for his daughter, this is what ultimately drives them to break free of what they are made to do. And even though Kizaru doesn't necessarily love any one of the characters he has had to hurt so far this arc, the fact remains that Oda chose to write Kizaru's past and relationships to be so deeply tied to the characters of Egghead Island for a reason. For some reason, going all the way back to Sabodi, Oda made sure to establish that Kizaru does have people that he is deeply, personally close to. And for that same reason, Oda chose to dig into that deeper and deeper in Egghead. Every single character on the Straw Hat side, Vegapunk, Sentamaru, Bonnie, Kuma, they are all written to be personal relationships for Kizaru. These are all characters that he is one by one having to hurt, and Oda is making sure to make it explicitly clear at every step of Kizaru's journey that this is deeply affecting him, that Kizaru does not want to do any of this. And yet at the end of the day, while many readers might have expected some turnaround for Kizaru before he went too far, some sentimental moment perhaps where he too decides to switch over and side with his friends against the evil world government, the the power of Kizaru's storyline seems to be in the fact that the programming of his obedience runs so deep that the last minute sentimental character change that we all wanted simply never happened. Kizaru went the distance. He actually killed Vegapunk. And now that leaves Kizaru in an extremely interesting position, one that we've never really seen a One Piece character in before, as Oda doesn't usually have characters who are this deeply morally conflicted. Whereas this arc has been filled with characters disobeying their programming, Kizaru right now exists as the example of one who stuck by his mandate through to the bitter end, and is now very clearly feeling the pain and remorse of what he has done. It's important to note that in Japanese, the phrase that Kizaru is using here indicates mental trauma more than physical. This is what's so intriguing about where the character is right now, removed from the final battle, but in a state of deep remorse and regret. These are extremely meaningful emotions to write in for a character as they typically preempt some form of change for said character. All that would be needed for Kizaru now to make that change is some final trigger. We saw that having to hurt Sentamaru, having to hurt Bonnie, and even having to kill his friend Vegapunk were not individually enough for Kizaru to truly throw everything away and defect from the Marines and challenge the world government. But it was all enough to push him to this fragile in-between state 
One foot in, one foot out. He's done his job, but now he's questioning the cost, and he, at the very least, no longer wants to contribute any further to this battle going on right now. He's trying to hide from continuing to carry out the world government's orders, but he's not yet at a place where he would actively rebel against them. So then what if that trigger for such a change is around the corner? Well, Kizaru has placed the world government above all else. He has placed following orders above all else. We do not know why he chose to do so, but we can assume that there is some degree of belief in the absolute authority and justice of the world government that he must be following, as so many marines do. This must be ingrained in him enough that it would push him to hurt even those that he cares about. However, the major upcoming event that is about to occur is the unveiling of the truth of the world government. That's what Vegapunk's speech is all about. See, we the reader know all about the evils of the world government, the nastiness at the core of it all, the heinous acts that they commit and then hide from the world, the deep-seated tyranny and oppression, the corruption, the abuse of power, all of it. But the marines, for the most part, are fed a lie, of a just government that aims to uphold the safety of the 150 nations underneath it. That lie will fall apart the moment that Vegapunk's broadcast begins. We don't know exactly what Vegapunk will unveil, but you can honestly take your pick. He could reveal the existence of Emu, and the reveal that a dictator has been ruling the world for 800 years. Or the true cause and motivation behind the genocide of Lelucia Kingdom. Or maybe the upcoming great cleansing that the world government has planned. Any and all of these things would shatter the image of the world government that the marines knew about, and most importantly Kizaru, who is already in a state where he is mourning his adherence to the world government, is going to be hit with the devastating truth that he was certainly, undoubtedly, on the wrong side of this conflict. He is going to realize just how truly evil the side that he serves is. He is going to be hit with the reality that his friend Vegapunk, who he killed on behalf of the world government for rebelling against them, was entirely in the right and Kizaru was in the wrong. And most importantly, Kizaru will realize that he is personally responsible for having killed the man who is most important to actually helping the world. Kizaru will be faced with the truth that he has made one of the most unforgivable mistakes imaginable, both on a personal level and in terms of global impact. At that moment, when the realization of all of this hits, Kizaru will once again be faced with a choice one final choice, to continue fighting for the government that he now knows unquestionably is in the wrong, or to try and do something to right the grievous wrong that he just committed, and honor the legacy of his friend who he killed. And the opportunity to right that wrong is built directly into the Ark. See, the Egghead Island arc begins with a world-changing event, the destruction of Lelucia Kingdom. Emu does this with a weapon, perhaps hinted to be the ancient weapon Uranus. And what's so special about this weapon is that it is very clearly a barrage of giant beams of light. Giant lasers, much like a giant version of Kizaru's own abilities. Nothing that we know of in the One Piece world could potentially stop a weapon like this. And if Vegapunk's speech begins, and it starts revealing the truth of the world, then there is no question that Emu would be forced to pull out his absolute last resort and fire the weapon at Egghead Island as a final ditch attempt to at least try to cut the broadcast short before too much information gets out. In that moment, the only person that could conceivably stop a light attack of that magnitude would be the light Logia user himself. And what's extremely interesting about this is that all this time we the reader have been waiting to finally see a Logia Awakening, with the beginning of Egghead Island specifically teasing the concept of Logia Awakening as something particularly unique and special. Yet despite seeing so many Logia users fight this arc, it still hasn't happened. Why explicitly tease Logia Awakening at the start of the arc if it's never going to be shown or be relevant? Could it be because Oda was saving it for the very climax of the arc? Much like we saw Paramecia Awakening for the first time at the climax of Dressrosa, Zoan Awakening for the first time at the climax of Wano, and so lastly a Logia Awakening at the climax of Egghead Island. See, under Kizaru's ordinary abilities, I don't know if even he could stop something like the giant laser weapon. But with Logia Awakening, a completely unseen ability that likely drastically increases the scale of Kizaru's powers, could it be possible for him to stop it? And if not stop the weapon entirely, maybe at least do enough to protect the protagonists. One huge sign that suggests that this is not only 100% possible, but this has actually already happened in the past, in an identical scenario, is the island of Ennis Lobby. 
this is where it gets really interesting. See, a common theory is that Logia Awakenings may permanently affect the climate of certain islands. For example, Akainu and Aokiji made Punk Hazard perpetually covered in fire and ice. And this may also have been a way that Crocodile might have prevented rain from falling in Alabasta. Looking at any lobby, three things stand out about the island. First, the giant gaping hole in the ocean that is identical to Lelucia Kingdom, suggesting the very same weapon that was used on Lelucia today was also used centuries ago on Ennis Lobby. Second, the fact that Ennis Lobby is perpetually bathed in light. It is the island of never-ending day. Something unique has happened at this island to make sure that there is always light shining on Ennis Lobby. And third and finally, Despite the huge crater that suggests that the ancient weapon was fired here, part of the island still remains, undestroyed. People say that Ennis Lobby is exactly the same as Lelucia Kingdom, but it's not. Because with Ennis Lobby, clearly a portion of the island was able to survive the attack. Inside this gaping hole, a small circle of land still somehow exists. Now, new islands don't just grow out of thin air, meaning it's not like the original island was completely destroyed by the weapon centuries ago, and then someone imported a new smaller island in and placed it inside the crater. No, the simpler answer is that once there was a full-sized island, the weapon was fired at this island, and it was almost completely annihilated, leaving a giant crater, but a small portion of it still somehow survived the attack. Something happened here at Ennis Lobby that didn't at Lelucia Kingdom. And the clue may be in the other big difference between the two islands that we see, which is that Ennis Lobby is bathed in perpetual light, whereas Lelucia Kingdom isn't. Could that be the key to Ennis Lobby's survival? Was there a Light Logia user at that time who used their awakening to protect Ennis Lobby from the weapon? Centuries ago, the weapon was fired at Ennis Lobby, giant destructive rays of light came down from above on the island, but the Light Logia user used their awakening to shield a portion of the island from the attack by diverting or preventing some of the rays. The weapon's attack left behind a giant crater of destruction in the middle of the ocean, except for a small segment of the island that was protected and left unharmed at the center. And as a result of this final act of Logia awakening, the Light Logia user left this area forever bathed in light. Therefore, any Lobby, the island of perpetual day. So imagine that same scenario playing out today at Egghead Island. We saw that the world government is willing to use the weapon to destroy islands. It's entirely possible they still have one more Mother Flame from Vegapunk, as it's never outright stated how many Mother Flames Vegapunk gave Emu. The time is approaching that Emu is going to have to go into complete panic mode and use his last ditch resort if the Gorosei can't win during the time limit and Vegapunk's speech begins. At the same time, we've had Logia Awakening hinted at this arc. And out of all the Logia users in One Piece, literally the only one who could stop this light-based weapon if Emu used it, just so happens to be the light Logia user that we have on this very island, Kizaru. On top of this, literally Kizaru's entire storyline this arc has been pushing him further and further to the edge of how far he will go obeying the world government before he breaks. And he now finally seems to be at that stage where he is broken from obeying orders and hurting people he loves. And it all comes full circle as the very trigger for Kizaru to realize that he was wrong for obeying the world government all along and that he needs to stand up against his masters would be Vegapunk revealing the truth about the world government to the public, which in turn just so happens to be the very same thing that would cause Emu to launch the weapon at Egghead to try and cut off the broadcast from going any further, which then in turn also gives Kizaru that pivotal character moment of realizing that he and he alone can step in and sacrifice himself to make sure that the rest of Vegapunk's final words play out, and that the Straw Hats who have been righteously fighting against the world government can survive. Kizaru, using his Logia Awakening, can divert enough of the attack that the rest of the protagonists are protected, and the final words of Vegapunk's speech can play out, thereby perfectly concluding the Egghead Island arc that is all about how the natural urges of living beings inevitably lead them to follow free will and emotion over obedience. Kizaru may very likely die in the process of saving everyone, but he gains redemption and freedom in the end. So do you think that Kizaru has one final sacrifice left in him? Let me know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, then definitely like and subscribe. And you can get my extended thoughts as to why I don't think Kizaru has any foreseeable future beyond dying at Egghead Island on my weekly podcast by supporting me on Patreon. Link in the description below.